Limiting reactant problems are considered to be one of the more difficult problems that are covered in the first semester of general chemistry. Because of that, we're going to take a second and look at limiting reactant problems in a simplified form in hopes of giving you a chance to understand the basic steps behind solving these problems. When mixing two or more reactants together, sometimes one of the reactants will be used up before the others. The one that's used up before the others is called the limiting reactant. And it's called the limiting reactant because it determines how much of the product will be actually formed. So it's, it's limiting the amount of product that's formed inside of the reaction. In a limiting reactant problem, what we want to do is determine which of the reactants is the limiting reactant, and then also determine how much product is being formed. Here we have a simplified reaction where two wheels plus one frame goes to make one bike. And even though this is simplified, this still represents a reaction. And so notice that the steps that we use to solve this limiting reactant problem are going to be exactly the same as the steps that you use to solve a limiting reactant problem when we're looking at chemical reactions. So in this question, I say I have six wheels and two frames, and I want to know which one of these two reactants is my limiting reactant, and I want to know how much of my product can be made, how many bikes can I make if I have six wheels and two frames. The first thing we do is to determine how many bikes can be made if you used up each of the individual reactants. So this will be two separate calculations. And then you compare which one of these reactants makes the fewest number of bikes. And the one that does this is going to be the limiting reactant. And that number will be how many bikes are being made. So we have a certain amount of our starting materials, our reactants. And we can use the reaction to come up with mole ratios or conversions to convert reactants to products. So in our first calculation, I have six wheels, and I want to know if I use up all six wheels, how many bikes can I make? My reaction says that for every two wheels, I can make one bike. And so we use that as a conversion here. And so when I multiply through, the wheels will cancel. And then I know that if I use up six wheels, I will make three bikes. So the two is still there, and so you take six wheels and divide by two. If I do the same thing with frames, the reaction says for every one frame that I use up, I make one bike. I have two frames, so if I use up all of my frames, I can make two bikes. So what I've done is I've taken each of one of my reactants and said if I use up all of those reactants, how much of my product can be made. So with six wheels, if I use them all, I can make three bikes, and if I have two frames and I use them all, I can make two bikes. And the one that makes the smaller amount of my product, in this case the two frames, is going to be my limiting reactant. So between three and two, two is the smaller number. So frames is my limiting reactant. So then the two bikes is how much product I can make. So this limits how many bikes I can make. If I had more frames, I could make more bikes. So I have an excess of wheels. So these calculations tell me what the limiting reactant is. And more importantly, it tells me how much product can be made. So let's step up the complexity here a little bit. And the idea is when we look at these reactions, we can look at it in terms of individual species. So I take two wheels, one frame to make one bike. But remember, in reactions, these can also represent moles. And moles is just a number like a dozen. So we can say when we look at these reactions, it takes two moles of wheels plus one mole of frames to make one mole of bikes. So notice that these calculations are virtually the same as we just did. And the complexity doesn't change any. It's just we are using the term mole now. So if I have six moles of wheels, my reaction says for every two moles of wheels, I make one mole of bike. So the units cancel. If I use up six moles of wheels, I'll make three moles of bike. So it's, it, the numbers are exactly the same. It's just we use mole now. Same thing with two moles of frames. I know that there is a one to one mole ratio. So for every one mole of frames I use up, I make one mole of bikes. If I have two moles of frames and I use them up, I will make two moles of bikes. And so the same thing is true. Frames are my limiting reactant. And now I know how much product I can make. I can make two moles of my product. So now let's go ahead and actually apply it to a reaction. And notice the steps are exactly the same. There's no difference. Here we're using hydrogen and oxygen to make water. But the steps are the same as when we were using wheels, frames, and bikes. So now I say I have six moles of H2 and two moles of O2, and I want to know how many moles of my product H2O can be made. So we do the same steps. We use up each one of our reactants and say how much of my product can be made. 
and the one that makes the fewest number of moles of water, in this case, is going to be my limiting reactant. And however much the limiting reactant makes, that's going to be how much product I can make. So if I use up my six moles of H2, my reaction here allows me to gain a mole ratio. It says for every two moles of H2 I use up, I make two moles of water. I use that mole ratio here, the moles of H2 cancel. So remember you want the unit you want to go away, the unit that you're starting with on the bottom, the unit you're going to on the top. We're interested in water, our product. So basically a two to two or one to one mole ratio. So if I use up six moles of H2, I make six moles of water. Next, I use up my other reactant, O2. I'm starting with two moles of O2. I then go to my reaction and I see that there is a one to two mole ratio. For every one mole of O2 I use up, I make two moles of water. And so I get a mole ratio or conversion unit here because for every one mole of O2 I use up, I make two moles of water. So if I use up two moles of O2, the units cancel, moles of H2O are going to be what I'm left with, and then the two remains, so two times two, I make four moles of H2O if I use up my two moles of O2. I then compare the two and say whichever one makes the smallest amount, in this case between six and four, four moles is the smaller amount. So that tells me that O2 is the limiting reactant and that the most I can make during this reaction is four moles of H2O. And this is the idea now that we know that O2 is the limiting reactant. What the limiting reactant means is that if we had more oxygen, we could make more H2O. So O2 is limiting the amount of product that we're making during this reaction.